Hello everybody, Flaming Shark back with another video, and today we're going to be reacting to Monster episode 65 through 67. So, there's only two more videos for Monster after this, and um, it's going to be fun. Uh, this was a series that uh, um, I will, I will, I will just tell you in advance that uh, the final two sets uh, to leave you out of suspense will be, in fact, sixty-eight all the way to seventy-three, and then uh, we will be tackling the last episode on its own. So that is a bit interesting, a bit different. So we're gonna have a really massive set next time. That will more or less finish up the story, and then we will watch that final episode in the following rotation before we uh, then get to Season 5 of My Hero, which probably will be interesting, albeit not to the same degree as this, because, well, I do like My Hero Academia. Not on this level, obviously. I'm super excited for this. Where we left off last time, Johan informed uh, Peter about... Uh, the supposed survival of Franz Bonaparte, Bonaparte though, whatever, uh, and uh, pfft. it's funny, I feel like the closer we get to the actual ending of this show, the less of an idea I have as to what's actually happening. Um, to drop this whole Franz Bonaparte thing so late in the story has me really fucking confused as to where this ending's going because this is like another layer. This this feels like something that's setting up the story to actually go on for quite a bit longer and we're actually near the end of the story. At this current moment, I only have 10 episodes left of Monster and you know, given it's a 74 episode series, we've watched 64 out of 74. I'm basically almost done with the series. You know, I say 10 episodes left. If it was made in the biz, I, I still have a lot of content left. In fact, that's about how much Made in Abyss I have, because I believe I have, what, like, like seven episodes in the movie, I think? I can't remember, actually. Wait. I need to check my Made in Abyss sets. No, I think I have eight episodes in the movie. I think Made in Abyss is 13 episodes, first season of Made in Abyss. I actually forgot. Oh, well. I mean, it's not going to matter. I mean, I'll, I'll be... Right. Wait, no, what the fuck am I talking about? I reacted through episode 8. Yeah, yeah, that was 4 to 8. No, I definitely only have... I think I have... Yeah, no, it's, thir it's 13. I only have five episodes in the movie. What am I talking about jesus christ um anyways like i said we left off with the big moment with johan and peter and i'm very curious where this is gonna go now because there's a lot here you know there was a lot in that last set that was really sus you know there was the stuff with um um you know, there, there's the there's the whole thing of like you know taking care of Kristoff and what's what's the deal going to be with that guy. Uh, there's the whole situation with. Uh, I mean, there's so much going on. Honestly, I'm actually so curious how this is all going to play out. And uh, Franz Bonaparte, like, is it going to be a character that we've met? Like, I honestly, at this stage in the story. Even though it's Monster, and Monster is, like, very... Monster is very good at introducing new characters and quickly making you give a fuck about them. Martin was a great example of that, even though I could never fucking remember his name in the actual set of episodes that involved Martin. And that's one of the things that sucks about uh, doing sets, is because I record episodes back-to-back, -back, I can't, like, watch one episode and then, like, uh, and then, you know, I fin I do, I'm done for a day or two and then I, you know, go back and fix the names or whatever. <laughs> but I'm really curious to see how this plays out because I definitely think that Martin, you know, Characters like that, like we just got Martin in the set before last, and that's an example of just how quickly they can really make you give a fuck about a character. And even though to some degree we have been building up Franz Bonaparte the whole story, I feel like there's an extra... I feel like at this stage in the story to really make it hit, I think it would be really cool if Franz Bonaparte was somebody we've met on our journeys... Even if it was a side character that wasn't relevant for very long, 
I think there would be something super poetic of that, especially if there were any hints that completely went over my head about that. Now, obviously, Franz Bonaparte would have to be relatively old. Um, but I don't have any, any remotely, it, to any extent, I don't have the slightest theory as to who could potentially be um, Franz Bonaparte. And uh, unfortunately, I do kind of assume it's just going to be a character that we haven't met, you know, Franz Bonaparte. It's not going to be someone who was under a different name or whatever, even though he's kind of known for that anyways as an author. But I think it would be really interesting if the show, if the series goes down that route. Um, and also how this potentially affects Johan is super interesting as well. I mean, there's so much here and that's if Johan's even telling the truth, which you never know because it's Johan. Um, the only other thing that I want to mention is as far as characters that I think, because now we're in the final 10 episodes. So as far as characters I'm expecting to see again, my boy. I don't know how I don't know how much longer we can wait before he shows up, but I feel like because he was such a good character and he was involved in a decent chunk of episodes, but really more so he was such a good character, and I feel like the writing of the series must recognize the fact that he was such a good character and the way that they left off his story. I fully expect Grimmer to get involved at some point. Uh, I don't know when, I don't know how late we're going to wait, but I fully expect to see Grimmer before this series is over. So we're looking for Grimmer. Uh, that's another thing I'm waiting for. My voice is kind of feeling it a little, which is unfortunate. I'm trying to drink a lot of water. Uh, but I'm always battling with my voice. Oh my God, if, if you're, if, if, if any of you watch my uh, Danganronpa Let's Plays uh, it's always a battle with my voice when I'm voicing characters for three hours or whatever. Uh, so, you know, I, I guess by default, by uh, the equivalent of that is that I, by, by doing that, uh, when my voice is not feeling the greatest, I can, uh, I think it, I think I have so much training from how rough that can be that I don't have much issue doing these recordings, even though it's still me talking a lot. I, I think I'm talking a little bit less than those videos, but also, um... Uh, I don't have to do voices, which certainly makes it infinitely worse. So anyways, it's time for episode 65, Johan's Footprints. Interesting. I mean, makes sense. We did leave off with Johan sauce, so let's continue on and see what Johan's Footprints are about. Maybe this is about how he, uh, you know, like the trap, the trail that he led, like the tracks, like how he found uh, Franz Bonaparte. So anyways, let's jump in to episode 65 of Monster in 3, 2, 1, and play. And it's gonna, it should show us the end of 64, yeah, because it did say in my notes that I can skip the intro for 65 and 67. But as I've kind of done in other shows, as you guys are kind of used to, in the first episode of Reaction, I don't mind a recap. Uh, it's after that first episode of the reaction where, you know, it's recapping it, it, when we have already watched up ep previous episodes right before that I don't want to bother with the recap. Yeah. So we'll have to see. So, so it's going to show us this recap. Then it's going to go to the opening. We'll have to see if we continue on with the conversation between Peter and Johan, because because knowing the way that the story is structured, we're probably going to transition to something else. And it's very cock, but it's just the way that Monster does its does its business. And he was pissing himself over the idea uh, over getting poisoned too. ヨハン。赤いバラの屋敷で。いや。大勢の人が。いや。ね。ケミンたちは実際に飲んでいる。僕も飲んでいる。
なぜ赤ん坊を殺した Good questions. 我々は手を組んだはずだお,お,お前は我々に力を貸す我々は妹を探し出してお前に全て予定通りです、uh -huh. 妹は、yeah. 妹の身柄は我々がすでに押さえた私に何かあれば妹はお前の思い通りにはならないいいか全ては私の計画通りに僕は何を All according to 計画僕の中の怪物僕の中じゃなく、mm -hmm. 外側にいたんだ、yeah. 何が言いたいんだフランツ・ボナパルタは Is alive. It is Franz Bonaparte. At least that's how they say it in Japanese, and that's what the subs say, so. I'm pretty sure that is correct. But of course, in Japanese, they like to add those vowel sounds at the end. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. I'm gonna miss this show a lot. This has certainly been one of my favorite anime. I really am gonna struggle. I think this is gonna be one of the hardest series I've ever watched to rank. I think this is. It's weird because I think the show doesn't have a ton in common with Attack on Titan, but I feel like similarly to Attack on Titan, I feel like I really am gonna struggle to rank this series. And I won't get into the specifics as to why I think this is a really hard one to rank, but it's definitely one of my. It's definitely up there. It's definitely high on the list. I don't think it's gonna. It's really good. I don't think it's like my all time favorite or anything, but it's it's up there for sure. Jesus Christ. あかんぼうの言った通りただの小娘じゃないないや赤ん坊赤ん坊の命令で私を捕らえに来たのいや赤ん坊は死んだよ死あんたを連れてくるように言ったのはペトルチャペックだあんたを人質に取れば彼の身
ザベックに殺された私らのために復讐しようとして殺されたそんなこと考えちゃダメだ。だって、だってミランは、ミランは、ミランはそんなこと望んじゃいない。Yeah. Oh shit, music picked up too. Yeah, the cycle of hate. Yeah. 何度でも繰り返される。That's what Tenma's trying to break. 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 Tenma's trying to Hell yeah. お世話になりました、ムスタファさん。ムインさん。スレイマンさん。おいしい料理をありがとう。ドクターテンマ、あなたまさか。<laughs> Just that sad face of like, ugh. And yeah. Petrol Chapek to you, Otokoni Kansur Shirioga. Yamahodo d e t e k i m a s n e Ah, do you know? Milan Korashi and Nerat Tanoa. Kono Chapek no you, Nana. Yep. Skew Kono Toko Sase. Dijo Chocho. カイザーホテルで極右組織の幹部通称赤ん坊が殺されましたいや、that's pretty insane little do you know he's not really the leader of the extremist organization it really is in fact sure enough Peter Chopic 誰かが oh Jesus 私が oh Jesus Tenma 止めなきゃならない Oh, it's the. the, uh. Kristoff boy. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Yep. I wonder how. I wonder how, uh, Johan would feel if Tenma blows, uh, Kristoff's brains out. Interesting. Oh, that's creepy. Oh, that's really creepy. If this is like just his house, and I was just. just... Johan. Oh, he's going to see Johan. You don't know, Johan. Interesting. So, kind of a place of like art and literature, a lot of space. You can dance, play music. Oh shit! Oh! Oh shit! Eva. どこにいるの、uh, well, he has no idea because he was waiting for him. Interesting. I was wondering what we'd, how long it'd be till we saw Eva again after her you know, resolution to try and kill Johan. Yeah. 
Yep. The man with the hand. どっちだ。ヨハンか。妹か。今となっては。どちらでも同じか。ヨハンは私を生かしておいた。私を殺すのは。妹だから。Oh God. All according to Keikaku. Jesus Christ, Nina. Can, is she gonna do it? I don't think so. Yep. Look, you just missed him. You're a day behind, basically. Yeah, let's let's go see Johan. There's a lot of people that are closing in. Gaeva, Tenma, and Anna. Makurada. Oh, creepy. Kwaio. Oh boy. Gonna to go hayaku de tayo. The fuck? Moshi ma de tara. Mada tsuite no kana. Koroshiai. Damn, silencer too.私が引き合わせなければあのパーティー会場であなたとあの悪魔あんなことをしなければマルティンはマルティンはマルティンはマルティンはマルティンはマルティンはマルティンはマルティンはマルティンはマルティンはマルティンはマルティンはマルティンは
So you also survived the Kinderheim. みんな死んじゃったのかな。外へ出てみようよ。大丈夫だよ。見てこいよ。こんな中にいる方がおかしくなるよ。僕見てくるよ。大丈夫だったら戻ってきて教えてくれ。うん。なぜだかわからないがその日ゴイチイチキンダーハイムの全員がおかしくなったなんかそうすだワインおめえびおうすべてディープだなキョーカンまでもが殺し合いを始めたわいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいや
if you regained all your memories, then、uh, you know who I am. Sure. <laughs> yeah? He, she absolutely is. She is troubled to say the least. She's somehow more troubled than Tenma. Rightfully so, though. お前たち双子がどうやって生まれたか。Oh? And end of the episode, yeah, of course. Of course. Oh, that little prince is raging. That episode had a lot going on,、um, just as far as intensity. That was a really intense episode. And I think things are just going to be getting hotter and hotter from here. I don't think there's going to be any, I don't think there's any more slowing down. We're, we're, we've reached the climax. It's time for things to go full throttle. Make it home to your land of beauty. Hmm. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was episode 65 of Monster. We have less than 10 episodes left in this great series that we've been on for a fair while. I mean, it's a fairly long show.、Um, but I feel pretty good about the, the amount of time it's taken us to finish this show. Like I said, we still got the two more videos you got,、uh, left. We're going to have the big video next time and then the. The, the much shorter、um, send off video, but I really, really am enjoying this.、Uh, and this has been a. I mean, this has just been an amazing series. And it's. God, like, it's, I'm almost more nervous than anything to get to the end of the show. And, like,. Next set is going to be just insanity.、Um, but I am super excited to be jumping into、uh, these episodes. And I thought episode 65 was awesome.、Um, you know, we, you know, Kristoff, fuck you.、Um, bitch, you, you, you never even fucking mattered. Get fucked, bro.、Um, I'm, I mean, I'm assuming Ten would put a couple bullets in his head or, you know, whatever. Probably his head, but, you know.、Um, Awkward for Ava to have a man die right on top of her, but at this point, I think Ava, honestly, if anything, might find that hot that Kenzo just put up, put the bull, saved her life, put a couple bullets in that dude's skull, and they could maybe fuck over his corpse.、Um, you know, because honestly, at this point, I, honestly, with how fucked up everyone is in this show, that probably sounds about right. I'm, I'm obviously joking, but maybe I'm not. This show is actually not completely fucked up. It's really like. It's messed up, I feel like, in an almost realistic way, which is crazy because Johan is almost otherworldly in how Johan he is, right? But I feel like with the rest of our characters, I feel like Johan is like almost purposely unrelatable. And I think that's part of what really emphasizes the fact that he's the monster. Because I feel like every other character in this series, whether you like them or not, and whether you personally relate to them or not, I feel like every other character in this series, to some extent, is relatable. And I'm really talking about our core characters. So I'm talking about, you know, Tenma, Ava, Anna, and、uh, Lung. I'm,、um, you know, those are like the four that I'm kind of referring to mainly.、Um, you know, of course, plenty of other side characters as well are super relatable, but I feel like、um, th- there's, there's a lot of, like, I, I think this show has gone out of its way to emphasize that our cast is full of normal people. Now, Anna's kind of a weird case. She's kind of, a, you know, but、um, the idea that we are normal, and I think the fact that The characters in this show are normal people that are going through extreme circumstances. I feel like only further emphasizes just how much of a monster Johan is. And I think that really 
brings the show together in a unique way that I really appreciate. I think that's something that um, Monster has done exceptionally well in its narrative is making everything fit because of the fact that these characters are emphasized in that way. I think that's a really well done aspect of this series and something that I really appreciate about um, something I really appreciate about, uh, something I really appreciate about, uh, Monster, uh, even though there's so many things I appreciate about Monster and the way it tells its story, but that's just one of the many. Uh, so that was a great episode, really enjoyed it, really excited to see the aftermath of what happened between, uh, Eva, Tenma, and Kristoff, obviously, Kristoff got his uh, brains blown out, or at least took a bullet or two to the heart. But I imagine, you know, aim for the head, right? <laughs> you should have gone for the head, as uh, as uh, the phrase goes from a certain famous movie. Um, but yeah, that, that was a really cool episode. Uh, definitely a really good start to the set. I imagine the next two episodes are going to be amazing as well. I kind of expect every episode to be amazing from this point on. Uh, because we are so close to the end that things are just going to be, things are going to get insane, brutal. Uh, you know, we're pretty much at the point now where anyone could die. Anything's on the table, really. I don't think any character in this show is necessarily safe from surviving these, you know, final nine episodes. So, oh boy, it's going to be, it's going to be tense watching these episodes, but I am really looking forward to it. So, uh, yeah, great stuff. Great stuff. So without any further ado, I'm going to get some more water and then we're going to check out episode 66 of Monster. Alrighty, it's time for episode 66 of Monster entitled Welcome Back. Uh, I mean, it's possible we're getting the meeting between Eva and Johan and that's and that's like a welcome back thing. Um, it could be other things. It could have something to do with France, Bonaparte, um... Could be an Ava and Tenma thing. A title I feel like has to do with Anna and Johan, but it could be about anything really. So I'm not going to think too much about the title. I am super excited. Like I said, this is absolutely one of my favorite anime of all time. One of my favorite shows of all time. Um, I don't think I'm going to get too far into trying to rank it. I think this is like a show that everyone should watch. I think it's, I think it's on that level. Uh, but beyond that, I don't really know where it ranks among my all-time favorites. But this is absolutely one of my all-time favorites. So anyways, let's jump in to episode 66 of Monster in 3, 2, 1, and play. Alright, we're bringing it back again. Straight to the OP? Oh, wow. All right. Here we go. Episode 66 of Monster. I think I'm not gonna watch the OP in the in the in these these two episodes. I'll probably watch it quite a few times in the next set, but I do talk a fair bit in the series, so cutting the OP helps me cut down the time Slovakia. Dainji Taisengo Bohemia Tiho Nokota Aru Kano Chona Shikangako Shushin no Gunjin. Sure。名前。名前 ブルノ大学に進学遺伝子工学を教授陣から将来を職務をする再演だった名前 
I figured. Futari wa Fraha no cafe de Siriata. Futari na coin no chirono. Jikan wa kakaranaka. This is. This is. I can't believe we're finally getting this. So, the girl is going to be able to do this. Oh, damn. And they were the perfect pair, right? その中の一例であると。男はシナリオ通りに任務を遂行したが、今やその通りに動く気はないと告げ、sure. そして言った。逃げよう。二人は逃げ出した。Yeah, run away before she gets too pregnant, sure. r u t r o w Well, that effect, that lighting effect, with that, 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 that's a really cool effect. Scenario door in the Umoka n i t Oh, God. So no cold or more. So then, scenario in the Kumiko m a r e t Of course, it did. God, that's sad. Onna wa Mishiran h e a ni kakuri sareta. So it, it birthed a certain despair that birthed despair, oddly enough. Despair. It, oh, wow. Kare ni a w a s e t e Kare wa atarashi i nimu ni tsukimashita. Of course. Kare ni a w a s e t e That's all they say. In other words, he, he they blew his brains out. Popped a cap in them. Yeah. Of course. God. So sad, so unfortunate. o n a k a n o k u a Junchu ni Hatsiku Stita Futango Data Kao Kuturani Ta Kanojiwa Kizuki Hajime Jesus Yoku Tazunete Kuru Kono Otoko Kanojo no Sungato Sketchi Stik Kono Otoko Kono Otoko Koso この実験の首謀者であった。フランス。私は許さない。あなたを決して許さない。私が死んでも、私の中でどんどん。ジェイゼス。必ずあなたに復讐する。君は面白いことを言うね。Try, oh man. See, I'm not the best voices, so I could, can't tell if that was a familiar voice or not. b e s t n e w started to be. Tweeny Kanojo, a cold o n d t What the fuck? She, what does she went into action m e When she went into labor pain? What a savage! Is that even possible? Jesus Christ! Kanojo was tired of the moon, but the moon was a little bit of a moon. Jesus Christ. Nante Utskushi. 
Yeah, there's Peter. He's あの子たちの名前を考えた。考えたの。あの子たちの名前。考えなくていい。名前を。あの子たちに名前を。あの子たちに。Holy shit。いいんだ。What the fuck。名前などいらないんだ。Jesus。That's the thing, like, we, we, we have no idea what their true names are supposed to be. ボナパルタ。そうだ。ヨハンは彼の居場所を私に聞いた。ボナパルタは生きているの。私は許さない。あなたを決して許さない。私が死んでも。私の中でどんどん大きくなっていくこの子たちが必ずあなたに復讐する。フランツボナパルタは生きているのね。これにようあんにえす。All Okay then, Jesus Christ, this episode. I swear to God, if it transitions. Oh my God, the fucking Ava. He, bro, Tenma, you're too, you're so nice. Holy shit, Tenma. ヨハンの居場所を教えれば、そこへ運ぶ。このままだとお前は出血多量で死ぬぞ。よし。知らないものは知らない。早く言いなさいよ。飛んだ医者だ。銃で僕を撃つ。yeah, I know, right? He's a he's a badass, and he's a better person than I probably would be. Although I don't know. I mean, I've never been in that situation, thankfully. Yo, how much will? I love that I kind of look like Tenma, though. Just a bit. The hair and shit. Oh, he's such a badass. Eva. There's a phone call there. 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 What? What are you talking about? There's a little bit of this guy. There's a lot of this guy. There's a lot of this guy. Hurry up. Call the phone. That's what he does. Kick,曲安とはいつもこうだ。あんたには人は殺せない。It <laughs> certainly starts. It seems like it. あいたがっていたよ。教えてあげるよ。ヨハンの居場所。Oh shit. Yeah, okay. Kenzo, 
すぐに病院から救急車が駆けつけるわ早くこの場から逃げる Fucking Kenzo Jesus Christ Of course he left on his own ケンゾーは言ったよあんたに伝言だこれ以上巻き込むことはできない君の人生を台無しにしたシーズス本当にすまない幸せになってくれあーだとさあ<笑>どうして泣くんだ Yeah, that's the whole point. You don't understand it at all, exactly. Because you're not, unfortunately, you're a broken human. I'm like,、uh, yeah, you need to get out of there, girl. Jesus Christ.、Uh, yeah, okay. And back to another blonde, a hotter blonde, a much hotter blonde. Not that Ava isn't to some extent attractive, but Anna. And Johan are like leagues above everyone else in this show. The Tenma, Tenma, I could see a lot of people being into that Tenma look though. He's pretty, he's kind of got that like rugged, nothing left to lose, like hot kind of vibe to him. But from a purely pretty standpoint, Johan and Anna are untouchable in this show. And they're two of the best characters. I mean, Johan is fucking Johan. And I honestly love Anna. And I, I love the struggle she's gone through as a character. And I think, you know, seeing her kind of overcome all of her fucking trauma. Like, I think she. I don't know if I'd say she's an underrated character because I don't know what the overall opinions are. But she is actually really close, I think, with Tenma and,、uh, for my favorite character, actually. Which I feel like is not a normal opinion, actually. I really love Anna. I honestly love all the major characters in the show. Because I love s amazing. Ava, I probably like more than almost everyone, I bet. I don't think Ava. I, I get the feeling not a lot of people like her, but I, I really do. And of course, Johan's a god. And Temba's a god, too. God, the frickin'. Walk of home, Jesus Christ. That was the plan. Yep. So they make their escape. Yep. Smart kids. ああ。<laughs> This is where they get their names. どうしますどうするってあの子たち本当に親がいないんじゃないかしらいたとしても帰りたくない理由があるいやとかなんだ。ああ。私たちで引き取ってバカなこと言うなやきつい言い方をして悪かったとにかく警察に電話しようんどうしたの僕
見て見て綺麗なお花いやおじさんとおばさんにあげてくるねもういいんだえ言っただろいい計画があるってさあFlowers hit the ground. Oh, Jesus Christ. Are you fucking kidding me? Jesus Christ! Holy! I mean, I, I'm not really surprised, but good God. Yeah, do I? I'm not going to. 赤いバラの屋敷から逃げ出して3匹のカエルの部屋にたどり着いた僕を君は迎えてくれた、oh, come on. <笑>だから今度は僕が君に Holy shit. Holy shit. おかえり、okay. ハイデルベルク二十歳の誕生日、yeah. 君を迎えに行ってから随分時間が過ぎた時間が過ぎた時間が過ぎた時間が過ぎた時間たあなたは殺しに来たのよあなたはフォルトナーさんそしてリーベルトさんを、yeah. 今まで私たちに優しくしてくれた人たちみんなみんなあなたが殺したのよ、yeah. God, that was so early on. Jesus Christ, that's a that's a callback. Yeah. Dude, that guy looks like you, you know the meme at home? That guy looks like Roberto at home. Which is sad because Roberto is not good looking, but and that guy has much better hair, but still. Oh, and we're really going all the way back. Holy shit. Showing all this literally first set stuff. Holy moly. Yeah, kill me. Tenma saved you. Yeah. Holy shit, Johan. あの時みたいに打つかいもうすべて終わりにするわ終わり終わりってなんだろう、うん、終わり終わり終わり終わり終わり終わり終わり何度も何度も Yeah, that's actually a Japanese word that I didn't know. I didn't know a worry was end. What is the end? That's a very good question. It's interesting too because there's a lot of unique religious symbolism and parallels in this series. Whoa. What the fuck? Oh my god, oh my god! That, that, this direct, this direct, oh my god, this direction, holy shit. That was, that was so good. Holy shit. Uh, we're gonna get more of Anna's childhood. Oh, 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 I'm home. Oh my god, what the hell? Oh god, and we're gonna get the storytelling next time. Oh my god, the next episode's called, literally is called I'm Home. Holy shit. Holy shit, that's so good. It's welcome back, and it's I'm Home, and it's all just playing into that, and their, and their past, and... 
Oh my god, why is this so good? Why is it so good? Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Holy shit, that episode was so heavy. Jesus. I mean, like, every episode of Monster, I feel like, is heavy. But, well, not every episode. But, oh my god, it's just... It's just the intensity. And just the... You know, it hits a little different when you know how close we are to the end and just the importance of the scene you're watching as it relates to the entire series. And I think when you start seeing... Because this is a show that doesn't really show a lot of, like, flashback content. When you start seeing these shots from, like, early Monster, I feel like it, like, like, like some of the, like, early stuff. Like, you know, first they were showing early Monster, then they were showing, like, first set, um... And so we were getting into like really early flashbacks and I feel like that only further kind of emphasizes like, yeah, this is important. This is a huge moment in the narrative, the series, like it's, it's all coming down to this and we're having this confrontation, which I mean, there's still enough episodes where this is probably not Anna and Johan's final confrontation, but maybe their penultimate confrontation. Uh, it certainly feels like an end game to their story. It, it almost feels like there's still a few too many episodes for that to be the case. But I am so curious how this series is going to manage the final eight episodes of Monster. And yeah, I, I this is, I mean, this is amazing. This is so good, and I'm just so into this story and I'm so invested and you guys have been along for the ride. So you guys fully know exactly how invested I am in this story, how much I've been waiting for this, how much I, I I've, I've just have just been enjoying the show from beginning to end and, and how invested in these characters in the story. Like I said, I am. So you guys get like that feeling that I have of just, holy shit, you know, this is such a good tale. I can't wait to see how it all goes down. And in the process, I'm just like, holy shit, like this is so great. And it really is, it really is quite an experience that I, I've just, I've enjoyed so much. And I hope you guys have been enjoying it as much as I have, because I, I, I mean, like I said, this is one of my favorite shows. And I know it's not been a super popular series on the channel. I don't really worry about that too much. Um, It's been nice, though. I mean, even though it's been a little less popular, purely the fact that I can just put the video on YouTube uh, for this series is just so nice. It's so nice to have, you know, some series that I can just put on the channel. And I should be able to do that with My Hero Academia uh, as well, which should be nice. Uh, My Hero Academia... Um, I don't know if I'll do it for all at like the beginning because I, I should start pre-recording that in advance. I'll probably actually start recording My Hero sometime. Well, you guys will be getting this video on Sunday, but sometime in this coming week, I probably will start watching uh, Season 5 of My Hero Academia. Of course, the season is over, so I can pre-record as much of it as I want. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I'm really excited for more of... Um, I'm really excited for more of... Uh, this show and uh i'm just so i'm so curious how this is going to go down so obviously episode 67 is going to play into the end of 66 not going to be any cucks here they're just going to transition fully on that and anna's going to tell her terrifying tale and and really kind of try to speak to to, to johan about you know the, the 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 hardship she's endured because of him and really get that through to him which obviously isn't going to get through to him because johan is johan although you know, if anyone could get through to him, it would be his sister, you know, the one person in this world he actually seems to care about to some extent. So I'm definitely looking forward to this, and I'm definitely excited to see uh, what what's kind of told. I think we're going to see some, probably a little bit of repeat footage in this episode, but I think a lot of new perspective and a lot of, uh, a lot of new content as well. But I think this is probably going to exist mostly within the the, the, the realm of the past, uh, which we've been diving into a lot as, you know, we are, we're finally starting to all fully piece together the story of Johan and Anna and how they eventually got, to, you know, their life stories because, you know, there's been so many blanks in their past that we've only kind of vaguely known about and we're starting to finally see it. We finally got to properly see their, their, their biological parents 
and um, you know we're really starting to get some of that stuff, and uh, it's been really exciting. So I, I'm I'm thrilled to check this out. I'm 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 thrilled to watch this episode. I mean, this is really the final kind of. This is going to be for us basically. This episode sixty seven is basically going to be the final cliffhanger, um, potentially because we don't know. I don't know about seventy three. I don't know if, if 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 this if this you know if the intense if the uh, you know this is going to go down to the last episode or if it's going to be a situation where the story kind of reaches its conclusion in episode seventy three and seventy four is more of an aftermath situation. I don't really know. Uh, but there is a significant possibility that this this episode will be in in my reaction series to Monster the final cliffhanger of sorts, and that is really freaking exciting because I'm so curious to see where we're left off and where that eventually leads us. Because, like I said, next reaction is going to be insane. It's going to be a you know, we've kind of slowed down on the monster it sets, but the next one is going to be a big chunky set. And, uh, you know, given where we are in the series, that's going to be absolutely out of this world. Um, I am super excited and I've been thinking about this set for a while on my set list. Like, holy shit, that's going to be so insane. And now it's the next set and that's just going to be out of this world. But for now, we do have episode 67 of Monster. I'm home to check out and see here on his tale of her terrifying tale. I think it'll be uh, quite enlightening. And uh, I think we will continue to further understand Anna's plight here. Um, so without any further ado, I'm going to check out the episode and yeah, let's, let's check it out. Alrighty, well, we're starting three and a half minutes into the episode of 328, so there was a really long recap, which I did go through uh, off camera, but it was a long recap, and the interesting thing about Monster, the anime for Monster, is usually the recaps are pretty short, or, or the cold open is just new content, when there's a long recap, and there's not been many, it is usually, ironically, when there's less, so the episode has a little bit less content, but usually the way the anime is structured, if there's a long recap, the actual episode, albeit a little bit less content, is always worth it. Most of the best episodes of the series are the ones that start with a long recap and then the OP, so even though we have a little bit less content in this episode, I expect it to be an absolute banger. So let's check out. And and of course I expect it anyway, since you know she's gonna tell us our tale, her tale, Anna. And again, last cutoff point before really the end, kind of, at this point. So holy shit. Let's jump into episode 67 of Monster. Three, two. One, and play. There he is. Holy shit. <laughs> Bokuma どこを触っても
Pretty basic meals. I mean, at least that's something. They're not blinded by the light, Jesus Christ. France. Yep. No, and there's the there's the hand gesture again. The... いや、この子は例。この子が。あ。まあ、かわいい。あ、この子は。he is beautiful. Oh, God, he looks like a little bit of a Didn't know we were watching hentai. Yeah. I recognize that symbol, too. I'm sure most of you recognize that symbol. Makes sense. Kampai! Lovely. And there's Bonaparte uh, just in the back.最初の人に Everyone except Franz, who just sat there with his glass. Franz Bonaparte, one of the two. Oh, that's a, such a cool aesthetic. Yep, the red rose. Oh, that's such a cool, such a cool aesthetic there in the shot. Yep. Yep.三匹の帰りにたどり着いた僕を君は迎えてくれた。僕は話し続けた。何日も何日も僕が体験したこと全てを。Oh my god, that shot. Oh, it's so good. So she thinks that she experienced these things, and he thinks that he experienced these things. I'm assuming is what that... I mean, that... Because that, she was going to tell him that horrifying tale, and then he told the tale. Oh, shit. What the fuck? I, I actually have no idea! 
I was not expecting that. Uh, 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 suddenly I'm really nervous. Um, holy shit, what just happened? Um... God, which one? Either- I- I don't know! What the fuck? What the fuck? Nina. were the gunshots. We heard gunshots. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this poor girl. She can't accept that. That was fucking Tenma? I mean, fucking Johan? Yeah, because they showed that long hair. I'm back. I said... I'm back. ただいま。お帰り。ヨハンは間違ってる。ヨハンは私の話を聞いただけ。バラの屋敷に連れて行かれたのは。ホリシェット。バラの屋敷に連れて行かれたのは私なの。Or Johan's mistaken. Oh my god. Yeah, the second they showed that long hair, I was confused, but then... And then... Johan fucking became, like, Anna in there. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit! And that's so good because it's the play on the fact that, that they look the freaking same! And there's so many cool things about that in this story. I mean, it goes back to the whole thing about Johan literally disguising himself as Anna and the fact that that has so much deeper meaning than even I realized. And I think that even you were supposed to even realize until after you've seen the whole show. Holy shit, this is insane. It's just so good. Holy shit, yeah, and she gets cut, and that's why it triggered her when they, she went back to the Red Rose Mansion, the, the thorns, oh my god, this is, this is insane, this is so perfect, this, see, see, w when connections like this happen in the story, I'm like, oh, this is just the greatest thing ever, so like, this goes back to why I struggle so much to how much I love this sh series, and yeah, what the fuck, that's so creepy. That damn book. Every detail, yep, and 
He stole it. Just like stealing someone's name. Yep. A monster without a name. It's both your faults. Because you went on that, you, you did what you had to do and... You did what you had to do and killed Johan, but Tenma then brought him back and now Tenma's the one that has to do what he has to do to Johan. Jesus. Oh my god. Tenma's trying to give her the love that she so desperately needs. <laughs> Jesus, Tenma. Oh my god, Tenma. Wow. Oh wow, Tenma. Holy shit! Yeah, there's Peter. Ah, Watashi da. Sanso Chikaku de Kurumanga Hokken Sareta. Ah, Gake Stani Otosarete. Ah, Naka de Eduardo Korosarete. Yatano Tabu. ヨハンはおそらくフランツボナパルタをプラハに彼の息子がいる。私はヨハンにそのことを教えた。ただ what is the end? Does the end even exist? Is there such a thing as an ending? Truly. Oh my god, the show is so good. Like I said, I think this will be probably the first manga that I uh, collect once I read it. フランツ。フランツボナパルタ。Jesus! Holy fuck. Well, that's it for Peter Chopik. Place we're supposed to go exists. Two broken souls trying to keep themselves together find their way. Was that? Was that the? Yeah, 本当によく来てくれたね。君の方から来てくれるなんて。さあ、入って入って。今ちょうどお茶を入れたとこなんだ。君に僕の自慢のお茶を飲んでもらいたかったんだ。ふふ。なるほど。気に入ってくれたかい？うん。特製のハーブティーだ。<笑> 
He's looking for your daddy. Daddy.なんでも言ってくれよ。準備はすぐにできる。次は誰を殺すんだい？ え変な冗談やめてくれよ。やめてくれよ。夢から。I've <笑>夢から覚めたんだ。何のためにたくさんの終わりの風景。今は違う。本当は。Memory that only I have. The place where we are supposed to go. The scenery, the true end. Well, you gotta pop Captain his ass. It's another one down. And the fucking music is so good. Uh, it feels like a metaphor for a place between heaven and hell type situation. Holy shit. Holy shit. Ruinheim. Ruinheim. Holy shit! Long, I was wondering where the hell you were, Jesus Christ. Interesting. Ruinheim, apparently the location of the end. Hmm. I have a fair bit to say about this one, unsurprisingly. Make it home to your land of harm. Make it home to your land of purity. The monsters outside of him. It's great to see how the the video, uh, the ED video, is always kind of correlates with the portion, the part in the story we are with the journey with Johan. It's great, and we're at the part here. Or like you said, the monster is out of him now, and and the uh, the ED correlates with that, which is really cool. That was Monster Episode sixty seven, which means we have seven more episodes left. Sixty seven out of seventy four complete. Can't believe it, honestly. And we're so close to the end of the series. Uh. Uh, it's just a it's a masterpiece it's absolutely a masterpiece and i think this show deserves to be one of the best shows of uh, all time and i think it absolutely is one of the best shows of all time um and i think the ending will help will maybe help me or maybe even make it harder for me to really judge exactly where i think it is on my all-time list but it's really 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 good it's so good um so yeah, this was amazing. Uh, I I love this show so much. I think it is um, absolutely phenomenal. I think it it one hundred percent is one of the best shows 
And I think this episode really emphasized so much of what makes Monster so great. Um, this episode emphasized the struggle between good and evil, but not in the simple sense of a hero versus a villain. Monster is not that black and white. Um, as, as with much of the, 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 sh the series being drawn and portrayed in a very realistic and even beyond that, a very monotone color palette, um, it, it, it doesn't, it, it similarly, it doesn't, it portrays its characters within gray. And while, you know, there is, you do have your heroes to root for in this show. It's not as simple as, as good and evil. It, it's about, it's about the soul and it's about our journeys in our lives and what can, what we do that condemns us as humans and what turns us into something beyond a mere human. And this story has done a great job of portraying that with Johan, you know, with Anna, with Tenma, with Long, with Eva, with so many characters. Um, but I, I do like to focus on those five because those five have been consistent characters. Even if, you know, they've come in and out of the story a little bit, those five are the consistently recurring kind of main characters of this show. And I think what, you know, Johan, Anna, Tenma, Eva, and um, Lung all have in common is that they're all on a journey. And throughout this entire journey, they've all been searching for an ending. They've all been searching for a point where they can finally rest, whatever that might entail. And we are nearing the, the zenith. We are nearing the true ending, the... We have apparently found the location, Ruinheim, where it will all go down, where we will find this ending. And we will learn what that word, Owari, truly means in the context of this series. And I think it's going to be super interesting to see that unfold. So, you know, to see what Johan's true ending looks like, to see what finale Lung finds himself to see how Anna ends her story, to see what conclusion Ava finds, and of course, to see what Dr. Tenma gets to do in this ending. Um, I, I, it's super interesting because. This show represents so much glorious, it represents so much glorious beauty of not only the brilliant storytelling, it, you know, it goes beyond just, you know, great storytelling, right? It goes into a, a deeper sense of storytelling that as much as we are watching a story about men, it is very representative of an even deeper story about, like I said, good and evil. You know, like I said, you could talk about, you know, if you want to look at it through a more religious context, almost like, a, you know, heaven and hell and the, uh, almost a battle between angels and demons and, you know, the, the, the true nature of the devil so to speak and how and how a devil resides within us all but the true birth of a monster comes through that true evil is born through hardship and a bunch of just absolute just travesties and it really tells us about because because this this series really condemns so much throughout its story and condemns all the different ways in which you can breed a monster. And it goes in, in depth to a degree on that process. And it talks about how, you know, it really sheds a, I don't want to say it sheds a light, but there's a lot of interesting commentary on that. And I think, you know, if you take it literally, it's like, well, yeah, obviously, but I think there's a lot of deeper meaning in that that isn't supposed to be as extreme. It's not about, you know, just making a Johan, right? And the circumstances to make a Johan, but it has to do with the fact that when you're a kid, fucked up shit happens and, you know, fucked up shit that a kid goes through can lead them down this path. And obviously Johan 
you know, Johan was fucking Johan, but I think there's a lot of interesting things there, you know, going beyond the fact that just Johan's a demon child. And it's just really interesting. And I think, you know, it all leads back to that. And then the, the way that it this show questions morality and the fact that Tenma spawned everything that happened in this show, every horrible thing that happened in the show was all a result of the fact that Tenma did the right thing. Every horrible thing that happened in Monster all stems back to the fact that Tenma did the right fucking thing, the thing that he should have done as a moral human being, and saved the kid that was next up to be saved over that mare. If he doesn't do that, presumably... Johan dies. Tenma, you know, you know, he, he, you know, he, he, he saves that mare, and you know, his, his life's great with Ava, and he's, you know, he's a big, he, you know, he becomes an even more big shot guy, and all the nobody dies, and all this stuff just goes perfectly for Tenma's life, the way that he, his, the life, his life was on track to go. And all these people that we've seen suffer and in many cases die over the course of the series, it doesn't happen without Johan. All of this comes back to Johan. And I think that's something that's so cool about this is and, and you know, I, I and obviously it was a big thing when it happened at the beginning of the series, but I think at this point we're so deep in monster that it's important to emphasize everything that happened in this show all leads back to that one decision Tenma made. And that's why it weighs so heavily on Tenma. Everything that's happened, whether it's right or wrong, and he did the right thing, it all weighs back on that decision. Because of that one right thing, it created a butterfly effect of all these awful things that have happened. And to see Tenma hold that weight on his shoulders and, and have to suffer through the burden of being responsible in his own mind and in a way legitimately for everything that was to come. It hurts so much. And the reason I'm going through this, you know, this diatribe is because I want to get to a certain thing. It all comes back to the way that Tenmo was comforting Anna. And in that same vein, Anna told Johan that story and you know we don't know for sure of course but in a sense if she didn't tell Johan that story Johan never would have become the monster that he was potentially and because of that it only furthers the idea and it only brings it all together in an amazing way and that's what's so good about it. And that's what's so brilliant because that is the link. That is the deep link between Anna and Tenma's characters that make them understand each other on a level that nobody else can, not even Johan. And that's something that's so cool. And that's why I think that scene where Aunt Tenma was saying, you can't die because if you die, I will have no one. And yeah. You know, maybe maybe there's a world where, he, you know, Ava's around or, or, you know, there's, you know, there's always, you know, Dieter or whatever, right? There's always people, right, that Tenma legitimately cares about. But nobody on this earth can truly understand Tenma's plight and the, the weight of his soul and his heart in the same way that Anna can. In a way, Anna is the only person that truly can sympathize with Tenma. And because of that, Tenma cannot afford to lose her. And, and it, it's just a beautiful, beautiful, you know, just full circle. Um, just it, It's just beautiful how that's all come together. And obviously that comes on the heels of us learning the, the, the deal about Anna and the fact that she was actually the one who was there for the Red Room, uh, Red Room Mansion. Sorry, I keep wanting to say Red Room, fuck. Red Rose Mansion Massacre, little RRMM, the Red Rose Mansion Massacre, and that is just, it's just, it's just, it's so good, it's so good, and the fact that this is all kind of, you know, those origins for Johan were all built on the fact that he was told the story from his sister, was just phenomenal, 
I mean, oh God. And of course it all plays back to the whole fucking thing of him dressing up as his sister. And that goes back to when they were kids and it's just so good. Oh my God. There's just so much stuff about this episode that just like makes th- this episode was amazing because it really made so many things about the show previously so much more impactful and there were so many things that are like even better in hindsight now that we've watched this episode and i think that was just absolutely phenomenal i think it was one of the best episodes of monster and i think it's an episode that as amazing as it was on the surface i i don't know how much of this you know, you guys caught, you know, I, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys caught quite a bit, but I, I wanted to add some perspective on why this episode was so good. From my opinion, I try not to get too in depth into this stuff because I'm not doing like real like review shit, but I feel like this is one of those episodes where I really had to dive into why it was so good, like beyond the surface level or, you know, beyond the first depth, you know, got to take it a little further deep, a little deeper. Um, but incredible, incredible episode, incredible set, one of the best sets, seven episodes to go, I'm terrified, we're going to, um, um, what was it, Ruinheim or something, um, yeah, so let me actually just get the, turn this off, yeah, we're going to, I believe it was Ruinheim, um, it was like, uh, I want to say it was R-U-H-E-N, and then Heim is obviously H-E-I-M, um, I, let's see it. I mean, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the end. I mean, we have two more videos, but you know, we're in the end game now, so to speak. So the final location of monster and, uh, I mean, what the fuck's going to happen? Um, Johan has to die. Uh, but I don't know what else is going to fucking happen. There's no way Johan survives this. And I think there's so many poetic ways that this could all go down. So I, I don't even know if I can really make a prediction. I just think that it's going to be an experience. There's probably going to be a lot of death in the process. And I think it's going to be a beautiful conclusion um, that's very poetic and very biblical, I almost want to say. Uh, not that I'm super familiar with the Bible personally, but I, I get the feeling it will be a very biblical ending. Um, and I, I expect that uh, Urasawa's got a lot of, uh, he had a lot of ammo that he was going to shoot, you know, he's going to shoot his fucking load and it's going to be, it's going to be insane because, I mean, this guy has linked so many things together in such brilliant ways. I can't even imagine um, how he's going to tie together the actual ending of such a masterpiece of a series of a work. And, and I mean, as far as the anime specifically is concerned, uh, the direction has been phenomenal. And, you know, I think, you know, I obviously haven't read the manga yet. I will probably be doing that, um, sooner rather than later. I might even start that before the year is end uh, over. Uh, obviously, um, you know, I'll wait until I finish the, the story, you know, the, the anime, but uh, I, I will probably be reading that relatively soonish. Um, I might give it a little bit of time, but we'll see. I can't wait to um, I can't wait to see the next set. I think it's going to be out of this world, and that that'll be a day that I mo- I pretty much maneuver my entire day around watching Monster because one, it's going to be six episodes, and they're going to be episodes that I probably have talked a lot about. So like that. Even with me jumping through some OPs and EDs, that still will probably be like a three hour plus video. I, I, I would I would expect to be at least a three hour video. So that's gonna be like an insane video and I can't wait for that. I feel like this video is gonna be pretty long because like even this episode, which I got to cut like the first three and a half minutes, um, it's still like going on really long. I've talked a lot about this uh, set. Uh, this episode in particular because it was just so fucking good and the show is so good and I feel like I have so much to say about this show and I don't have that much more time to talk about it so this might be a show that we'll eventually tackle in a future in a future um you know there's a lot of series that I honestly still want to talk about and make videos about um and it's something that I especially now that I've become you know more consistent and I don't know how long term this will be but 
As far as next year is concerned, I think that's a goal that I, I, I potentially will look into doing some, you know, kind of um, videos just discussing um, some of the series that we've reacted to, you know, I've reacted to on the channel and, you know, get, you know, a bit more of a deep dive into some of my thoughts and um, opinions on some of my um, shows, especially some of my favorite series. And this is one of them that I think there's a lot that I could talk about, but of course... Uh, I, I, I still need to finish it, and uh, I get the feeling the ending's going to be out of this fucking world. So anyways, <sighs> wow, what an episode, what a set. Uh, so uh, yeah, if you guys want to support the channel, you check out the Patreon down below in the description, vote on polls every month, you guys know all the drills, there's other links too. But uh, without any further ado, it's time for me to bid you adieu. Flame and Shark signing out. Hope you guys have a wonderful, fantastical day. And I'll see you next time with another video. Thanks for watching. Peace.